Hello, welcome to 90 Second Science. Today we will go over a very old 30 year old paper, but still very relevant to today's events. Scientists from Japan are discussing the use of humid ozone for virus removal. Now they show that 200 ppm, 200 parts per million ozone in 80% humidity inactivates most enveloped and unenveloped viruses. There, you know what this paper is about, the rest is details. So let's take a look. In this paper, published in 1989, on virucidal effect of ozone treatment of laboratory animal viruses, scientists from Japan study 0 to 300 ppm ozone at 80% humidity in room conditions, and they show quite effective contamination, suggesting that the ozonation method may be a good way to disinfect not only laboratory animal RNA viruses, both enveloped and unenveloped, but also rooms, clean rooms, and safety cabinets, which is exactly what we need in today's environment. To begin with, the authors mention that a 60-minute exposure to UV at room temperature or elevated temperature did not lead to a complete inactivation of the virus in their studies, and it is why they were looking for ozone. They also mention that as a nation has already been, 30 years ago, has already been successfully demonstrated to inactivate viruses in water and wastewater streams. They look at four different RNA viruses, and you can get details from the paper, which of course I will link down below. Important to note is it's two kinds of viruses, both enveloped and unenveloped. Now, in their study, they have viruses in what they call dry phase. So these are freeze-dried samples in a glass vial. Or they have liquid phase, which is a 100 microliter drop in a petri dish placed into this glove box with a humidifier, ozone generator, and ozone monitor. It's a very nice design and something that I would definitely like to replicate if I do the, these kinds of studies. In their case, controls were kept in a moist chamber at 90% humidity for the same time period as the treatment. I guess it's a good control. But what is most interesting is their experimental results. They compare 100 and 200 parts per million ozone with 70, 50 and 80% humidity and 200 ppm does lead to about a one log or a 90% reduction in the viral load after three hours of treatment. However, if you go to 80% humidity with 200 ppm, complete inactivation is achieved in 60 minutes with one of the virus samples and three hours with the other. Again, these are dry samples and it looks like 70 or better 80 or 90% humidity at 200 ppm seems to be most effective for inactivation. Comparing 200 and 300 ppm at 80% relative humidity gives us about the same result. So 200 ppm seems to be the sweet spot. Now when we switch to a liquid sample, even in four hours of treatment, we get a couple of log reduction getting close to complete inactivation. But obviously these results are significantly worse than the dry treatment. The authors further look with the same liquid sample at 100, 200, and 300 ppm, and the results are not as amazing as those with the dry sample. The authors look at different kinds of liquids, and they immediately observed that if the virus was in phosphate buffered saline, they observed no inactivation, so inactivation was blocked by the liquid. So they decided to dilute and use different liquids. So in deionized water, they get five to six log reduction at 300 ppm, 80% relative humidity in 60 minutes. With saline, they get five logs. With the buffer solution, they have significantly worse reduction, especially in a phosphate buffer solution. Now here, the authors are looking at phosphate buffered saline with one of the viruses in a control with no PBS, they get a good roughly six log reduction. But even in significantly dilute solutions, the effect is blocked, although I don't understand the initials. So diluted 15 times or uh, 1 15th molar concentration of PBS, they get five logs. 
but they dilute PBS twice and it drops to three logs. So this is, uh, that's why I put a question mark here for myself. There are some questionable effects here and only when they go to significant dilutions do they get back to uh, four or five log reduction. They observe similar effect on the other virus that they need to go to one over 15,000 molar solution to get back to a five log reduction. The authors also studied what they call the thickness of the sample. So they basically took the sample and diluted it, raising the height of the sample. So 0.1 millimeter to 0.5 millimeters in their dish. And the result is as expected, the thicker sample takes longer to disinfect, but in this case, they achieve complete reduction in three hours. So if your samples are wet, it will take longer to disinfect them. Now the authors claim that this is the first mention of the effect of ozone on laboratory animal viruses. Well, it has been 30 years, so it might be. In any case, this is an important discovery. Shows that that relative humidity was certainly a critical factor in the dry face virus tests. Higher inactivation at higher humidity. And their results are the best at 80% relative humidity, 200 ppm ozone. Authors also show that wet liquid viruses are harder to inactivate and there is effect of media present in the liquid. I would imagine based on my experience, organic contamination would make this even worse. So if somebody sneezes onto the surface and the droplet contains virus, it will be harder to inactivate with ozone. However, overall, the authors conclude that use of ozone may be a good method to use in laboratory animal centers in the following three ways. High inactivation efficiency, safety compared to formaldehyde, which I would imagine is worse than ozone. And third, it leaves no residue. So let us continue looking at advanced oxidation technologies for viral disinfection, which clearly is very important in modern society. Please do subscribe. I do read all of your comments. This paper was recommended by one of, one of the readers of this channel. So thank you very much. Here it is. I found it very interesting. I am looking at a number of other ozone related papers, which are coming up. So please subscribe, click the little bell icon, and I'll see you guys very soon.